Welcome to The Kitchen Table, a conversation about faith, music, and culture. Join Shine.fm's ministry director, Brian McIntyre-Utter, and his 18-year-old son, Jake, around the table for this week's chat. Well, welcome back. We are in episode number two of The Kitchen Table. I am Brian. And I'm Jake. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in to this uh, second episode. Thank you, everyone, who actually joined us on the first episode. We got a lot of great feedback. Thank you. We hope you enjoy it. Yep. Um, in fact, we love your opinion, love your thoughts. If you have a question you want us to answer, this is basically how we set up the show. We talk about a faith issue. It's a faith question. And we talk about music. And we talk about something happening in our world this week and, mm-hmm. and how that kind of plays in line with, with just the Christian worldview kind of thing. So, um, again, uh, yep. this is a father-son podcast. We like to celebrate the generational differences. And I actually had someone comment said, we want to see you guys argue. Really? You want to see you argue <laughs> over something and then how you guys, you know, work through that argument. Oh. So uh, we'll get there. A little, a little <laughs> debate guess. action? Yeah, I guess. So like a father-son never argue, right? I think we fought like yesterday, didn't we? Uh, pretty much every day on something, I'm sure. <laughs> yep. So let's get to our uh, faith question for today. All right, so it's kind of got a little background for my faith question for the week. It's not actually mine necessarily. It's one of my friends. Uh, her name's Emma, and she asked, if God is all-knowing and all-powerful, why do we need to pray if he already knows and knows the answer? Right. So that's what she asked, and I'm I'm kind of wondering that too. So you're giving me hard questions, deep theological well, questions. You can thank Emma for that one. Yeah, thanks, Emma. Again, as we mentioned in episode number one, I'm a professional nothing, not even a professional dad. But I'm a professional teenager. But you're a professional teenager, whatever that qualification takes. Uh, You said it, not me. So the question is, if God is all-knowing, he's sovereign, he knows everything, he knows what's going to happen, why do we even pray? Why do we even bother praying? Because he's predetermined the, uh, the plan for the entire world and everyone in the entire world, and Scripture tells us that. But then at the same time, the Bible also says that it teaches us how to pray. You're listening to The Kitchen Table. It's a uh, father-son podcast talking about faith, music, and culture. Let's let's start there, okay? The Lord's Prayer. Everyone knows the Lord's Prayer. My Father um, in heaven. Oh, yeah, exactly. And, and so when you break down the Lord's Prayer, it kind of explains certain things. And this is the way Jesus taught us. I mean, this is, these are Jesus' words. Mm-hmm. You know, Our Father in heaven, what that does is that actually connects us to God relationally. That's the connection we have with yeah. the Father. He loves us to call him Father, so it establishes that intimate relationship. How would be your name? That's a simple worship statement. We are worshiping him through our prayer. When we say, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, what we're doing there is we're acknowledging it's his agenda. We're, we're acknowledging that predetermined plan, Mm -hmm. you know, just by saying that. Uh, When we say, give us this day our daily bread, that is just declaring our dependency on him. We are really powerless without him. Um, Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Get yourself right with God. In our prayers, we have to get ourselves right with God. If, If I've sinned against you, I am sorry. I ask for forgiveness. And that's exactly what that's doing. When it says, and our debtors, that's getting ourselves right with each other as people, mm-hmm. as family, as friends. Which is really hard sometimes. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, but it's in there. I mean, when you when you break this prayer down, you look at these different aspects of this prayer. This is how Jesus wants us to respond. Mm-hmm. It says, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. That's just a reminder that we are engaged in some form of spiritual warfare. And we have to acknowledge that. And we have to, again... Go back to that dependency on him for everything, even that spiritual warfare. Now, in the Bible, God's yeah. giving us the Lord's Prayer as an example for our own prayers, or is it the prayer like... Is it just repeating that prayer over and over again? Yeah, like that's what I mean. Not necessarily. Um, you can. It's a great place to start if you don't know mm-hmm. how to pray. But it's just kind of showing us the things that that Jesus, sort of like an outline of Jesus given to us. Mm-hmm on how to pray. Again, connect with God, worship Him. You, you pray His agenda first, acknowledging His plan. You pray for, you acknowledge the dependence on everything. You're getting yep. your heart right with God and right with each other. You acknowledge that uh, warfare that you're in and that you are dependent upon Him. And then the last part where it says, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Um, that is you expressing your faith 
in God's ability. Mm -hmm. You've acknowledged that dependency, of course. You are expressing your faith in God's ability. Yeah, and to piggyback on that, yeah. I when I went to NYC, which is Nazarene Youth Conference, um, it's a giant worldwide conference for um, teenagers yeah. every four years. The theme that we went to, it was called Thy Kingdom Come, and it was talking about uh, the Lord's Prayer. And so they had this like workshop and it was taking you through every step, kind of how what you just did. So you had like little exercises. Yes, for each we had exercises for the each part of the Lord's Prayer, which was really cool because okay. you see it from a different aspect than just words on a page or that you memorize. You see it as like living and it's a visual kind of. And it was really cool. So back to our faith question. Yeah. Again, this is the kitchen table. Uh, we talk about faith. We talk about music. We talk about culture. I'm Brian. And I'm Jake. And the question we've been discussing today is, if God is sovereign, if he is all-knowing, if everything is in his control and according to his predetermined plan, why do we need to pray at all? Mm -hmm. Is it going to change things? Everything we need for this life is found in God. Now, God is willing and he's able to give us everything that we need. And he actually, this is the key thing, he knows what we need before we even ask him. But scripture still talks about us asking him. It's an important part of this relationship we have with him. Uh, Matthew 7, 7, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Matthew, uh, Mark 11, rather, uh, 22 and 24, have faith in God. Whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Mm -hmm. Mark 9, this can come only out of prayer. Luke 22, get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Matthew 21, if you believe, you'll receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Now, many people think, oh, wow, I need that new Mercedes. I'm going to pray for it. That's not, God is not Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. You know, um, this is according to his plan. Can we change God's plan? That's probably another question you have in, you know, through this thought mm -hmm. process. Yeah. Can we change his plan? I feel like you're trying to like it free will like a pre, I, I'm getting like a little free will vibe here. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just thinking that I believe in free will. I don't think our lot, well, I know God knows our lives are pre predestined, but I think he gives us the choice to take which path, but he knows the path that we're going to take. What I think of, I think of a tree. And so you have like your starting root. So like a tree going up and mm -hmm. then you have branches going off. Right. And each branch is a choice that you get to make. And then, but God knows the solution to each branch and where it's going to take you in life. And the question is, does God really know the end of the story? Does Should, he? I mean, shouldn't? Does he really know the end of our stories? Because of that free will, we have a choice which branch we're going to be taking. But shouldn't Adam and Eve, they, they changed the plan. God's plan was not sin and, the, and a world outside of the garden in relationship but with him. But didn't you think like he actually knew what that Did was going <clears> to... <throat> yeah, see, that's the question. I don't know. Many people say that prayer doesn't change God, but what prayer does change is us. And so there are certain ways that prayer benefits us. If you think, well, I can't change God's plan. I think you can. I think you can. Because of that free will, he knows we have choices. Um, yeah. The first thing that prayer does is prayer makes us obedient, okay? We pray to God because that's what he wants for us. Prayer brings peace to our heart and mind um, because, let's face it, the Scripture talks about stress, anxious, worry. Prayer actually can bring peace to our mind. It's releasing our concerns to God. That's a, a therapeutic thing yeah. to be able to communicate that to Him, even though He already knows, which is the crazy thing when you think about it. Prayer humbles us. When we think about it, we're all broken, damaged people. So when we pray, it reminds that He is God and I am not. Yeah. You know, that dependency, again, we talked about earlier on, like and relying down. on him, it puts us in perspective. Do you believe in this uh, prayer grows our faith? You think prayer grows our faith? Yeah. I mean, yes, I do think that it does help us grow in our faith. With what you said with being humble, I think it's stepping down and knowing that you're not God. That even in the good times of your life, you are still going to praise God. And I think it helps you grow as a spiritual person. Right. Well, that's another thing. Prayer grows that relationship that we have with God. It's communing with God. It's communication. You can't have a relationship without communication. Yeah. 
the more we pray with God, the more intimate that conversation becomes. It's not the fancy words when you pray. You, you hear someone in church pray, and they pray with such power and conviction, and they use these big old fancy words. You think, wow, they know how to pray. Yeah. That doesn't matter a lick. It really doesn't. It's about having that intimate conversation with God, and that intimate conversation only happens over time, just like a relationship. The more you trust God— the more you're going to tell him, the more intimate it becomes. You're listening to The Kitchen Table. It's a father-son podcast talking about faith, music, and culture. It also allows a a conduit for for God to work through you. You know, God can do anything, and he can do anything with us or he can do anything without us. But when we have that open conversation with him, it allows him to work through us. He already knows our hearts. Mm -hmm. He knows everything. If you're trying to hide something from God, guess what? It is impossible. It's not going to happen. He invites us to ask him for what we need. He wants us to ask him for what we need. Now, is he going to provide everything we ask him? No. No. He already knows what we need. And and here's the thing about, do you think we really know what we need? No. You know, we think we know what we need, but honestly, we haven't a clue. We really don't have a clue what we need. There are moments in our lives when we get to that point where we can't pray. Personal story. Before Jake was born, my wife and I, we lost two children in the first trimester, miscarriages. At the same time, during the second one, my mother-in-law passed away, 48 years old. And for a year, my wife went through a terrible depression. And after that point, you know, in us talking and working through it with counselors, She couldn't pray. She didn't have the words to pray. God already knew her need, but she could not come up with the words. Just take confidence in the fact that even though we might not have a clue of what we need, God knows what we need, and he can provide those words. The most basic prayer, the most basic prayer that you could ever pray is real simple. Four words, thy will be done. And what that's doing is that is inviting the Holy Spirit to then intercede for us. So the Holy Spirit is praying for us when we don't have those words to pray. God knows what we need before we even ask him. He knows our needs better than we could possibly ever do. So if you're asking yourself, again, back to that starting question, if he knows everything, why do we pray? I'm giving you all these little reasons. We pray basically because we need it. It's for us. It's for us. It's, it's not necessarily for God. Yes, praying is part of that communication with God, that relationship with God, glorifying God, but we pray more for us. To check our hearts. We're not informing God about anything in our prayers. Mm-hmm. It's not like we have to vocalize things in order for him to understand what we're going through because, honestly, he knows exactly what we're going through. He knows, Scripture says, he knows the number of the stars in the sky. He knows the amount of sand on the seashore, the number of hairs on your head. He knows everything. So why we think that we need to be better at, at you know, telling him everything that we need is yeah. beyond us, but we do. It's, it's our human nature. Nothing surprises God. You don't have to yell at him or shout at him to make him understand, even though, you know what, you can I've done it myself. When you're angry at God, you shout at him. He can take it. He's got real broad shoulders. <laughs> but again, our prayers, and we've gone back to that, breaking it down of the word of the Lord's Prayer, mm-hmm. the dependency upon our Heavenly Father. You're listening to The Kitchen Table. We're a, a father-son podcast on faith, music, and culture. Here's an example. A dad watching his daughter put together a puzzle, struggling to put together this puzzle. She's trying to put together these pieces. She can't get it right. The father watches his daughter do this, but he doesn't interfere with the daughter, okay? Finally, she gets frustrated. She calls up into her father's lap, and she simply says, hey, can you help me put this puzzle together? What does the father do? He bends down with his daughter. They start picking up the pieces, and they start putting the puzzle together. Now, why didn't he help his daughter earlier? Well, she didn't ask for help. He wanted her to try on her own. He wanted her to ask for help. So although he longs to come to us in our time of need at our lowest valley, he wants us to ask him specifically for that. Is that selfish? No, that's how we learn. How often are you going through a situation in your life and you're struggling and you're trying to do it on your own? I'm this way. Man, I tell you what, I'm a type A control freak. I want to do it my... Amen. 
I knew he was going to intervene there. Hey, man. He, yeah. And it, and it gets to a point, and many times we have to get to that point in our lives when we have to surrender to that point where we say, I can't do this by myself. Mm-hmm. That's what prayer is all about. We pray because God is honored by our persistent faith. He wants persistence. He gives three answers. You know this, you know this one, the three answers he gives? Yes, no, and, and wait. Oh, yeah. now I do. We get weight a lot. Oh, yeah, we do. We do get weight a lot, but he wants us to persistently pray. So I just had my freshman orientation here at Olivet Nazarene University, and I walked in with being a music education major. Right. But I had always... talked about that last week, by the way. Yeah, I know we did. (laughs) Like, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be a music ed major perfectly. And then I showed up at orientation, and I had always been torn between music ed and um, social work with mm-hmm. a minor in music. I just kind of, I was sitting in all of like the music classes and I knew I still wanted to do music, but I wanted to, I prayed about it and thought about it. And I wanted to help kids use music to help their, with help them with their problems. Right. Instead of actually teaching kids how to, how to play music. And so I had been praying a lot about music ed and I thought that was what God was wanting, calling me to do. But I think it was just the events that happened in my life and how I could not get the high enough score for the ACT four times in a row. (laughs) I just think that was kind of like God's subtle way of like, maybe you shouldn't be a music educator. Maybe you should be a social worker with a minor in music. I'm officially switching to social work with a minor in music. So I just think that's, and I mean, that was like the most recent and it's just kind yeah. of funny that we're talking about this this week. And but he, and again, I've I've shared you know to other people that God many times He calls you to do something, but He doesn't reveal it all at once, and He'll reveal mm-hmm. pieces. He did that for me, and it comes down to and again back to this issue of 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 praying when God is sovereign. Is it even necessary? God runs the universe, and we don't. He's in charge, and we're not. Mm-hmm. And I think many times we have to step out of our own ways to really get the full picture, yeah. to really understand what's going on. It's hard to answer this question we've been talking about today. Bottom uh, line I... is this. Prayer, why do we need to do it? Prayer changes us. We depend completely upon the Heavenly Father. Our prayers, and this is, I think, the sentence I think that's most important. We talk about God being sovereign. He's already got it all mapped out and all planned out. But do you think maybe that our prayers are part of his plan? I feel like you need to insert like a mind blown. Mind blown. Because that was like a mic drop line right there. This is going to be explosion sound effect here. We've said a lot about that. Um, Hopefully it helps you understand why we pray Mm -hmm. when God is sovereign and all-knowing. Can we change his mind? I think we can. I think persistent prayers of people can change God's mind. Yeah. Why not? I'm not going to put God in a box and say he can't do that. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know. I, I don't know his mind from before. Did it change? I don't know. All right. Again, you're listening to The Kitchen Table. I'm Brian. And I'm Jake. And this is a father-son podcast talking about faith, music, and culture. All right. It's now time for a, a segment we do every week when we move into talking about music matters. This is Music Matters. Now in verb. <laughs> What we do in Music Matters is I share a song that I like. And then I share a song. And then you share one you like. That's current because I don't know anything that's past my pre-born self. And so I go past his pre-born self into uh, music that uh, was from the 80s that I think really has still things to teach us today. I start with a new one from a buddy of mine. I love this guy. His name is Ryan Stevenson. He is on uh, Toby Mac's uh, record company label, Goatee Records. He's just a great guy, great humble guy. You probably know some of his music, but he has a new song, and it actually has Bart Millard from Mercy Me. Yeah, I was like, isn't that Mercy Me's lead thing? Yeah, he's doing on this song. It's called No Matter What. It's basically for those people who have failed. Raise your hands if you failed. Mm, All raising, hands up. Thank raising. you. Hey, I'm Ryan Stevenson, and I hope that my new song, No Matter What, really encourages you and lets you know that you are a daughter, you're a son, no matter what you've done, no matter what you've been, no matter what you think about yourself, he loves you with an everlasting love. No matter what you've done, you can't erase 
And it's true. I, I've talked to people who, who have said, I am so messed up. I've done so many wrong things. There is no way God can forgive me. There's no way he can restore a relationship to me. And that is the biggest lie that Satan uses. God's love for you, where you are, no matter what you've done in your life, is the same love he has for his only son. Did you hear that? His love for you, no matter what you've done, is the same love he has for his own son. And he can restore that relationship. Why I picked this song, I want you to listen to it because... I listened to the last week's and I thought it was great. It's, it's got a feel to the song and I'm just thinking you would pull out your ukulele and play the ukulele to the song. It's kind of... I don't know how to describe the musical The beat. Hawaiian vibe. It's kind of a swaying back and forth. I might, forth. Have, to, might Beach have to see Boys. if I can do a little cover of it. Beach Boys kind of thing to it. Okay, so no matter what, Ryan Stevenson featuring uh, Bart from Mercy Me on the vocal. My song for the week is called Kaleidoscope by Urban Rescue. Mm-hmm. Um, Urban Rescue is kind of a, it's it's an up-and-coming worship band. Uh, the way I heard of them, I went to Camp Electric, which is at Trevecca Nazarene University in Nashville, Tennessee, and they did the worship for the week. And they're kind of, I don't know, techno-y, like techno worship. I right. don't know if that's a, if that's yeah. a official genre of music, but I loved it. It was really dancey and it was like a great worship set, I thought. Were you with me at the Ring Collective show? Which one? House of Blues? No, I was not. Okay, because they played House of Blues uh, when Ren Collective came, Urban Rescue Open Forum. Loved them. Great band. Yeah, they're really good. Um, so the song Kaleidoscope talks a lot about seeing the world through God's eyes. It says, I want to look through your kaleidoscope. Mm-hmm. That's how it's kind of using the kaleidoscope aspect of it. It's a great song. Should give it a listen. All right. Now we're going to go back. Back to the future. Pop culture reference. All right. Now we're going back to 1986, way before you were born. I wasn't born yet. I was still in high school. And this one is by a band called DeGarmo and Key, Eddie DeGarmo, Dana Key. Eddie, after DeGarmo and Key sort of ended, went into the record industry. He started Forefront Records, so he's the guy that basically started DC Talk which is Toby Mac, yeah. Audio Adrenaline, lots of other bands. And then Dana also, Dana Key, Dana Key got into the industry with the label, and uh, he had lots of bands that came out of his label as well. Some of my favorites, like I think Satellite Soul was one of them. You <laughs> never heard of this. I don't know who Satellite that is. Soul. <laughs> but anyway, they were involved with the, uh, the record industry for a long time. Eddie eventually moved Forefront Records. His label was acquired by another company, and he moved into that larger company, just retired a year or so ago. Really? And um, I was able to see DeGarmo and Key get back together at a festival called Cornerstone and play. Oh, you love that festival. I with do. all of your heart. And uh, it was like a year or so before uh, Dana passed away uh, suddenly. And so they sounded literally like 1985. It was all the original band. It sounded like stepping back to 1985. Sounded amazing. <laughs> Their voices were spot on. But the song I picked... It's one of my favorites from 1986. The uh, album was called Commander Sozo and the Charge of the Light Brigade. This is a Christian band, and that's the yeah. album name? You have to remember in the mid-'80s, a lot of these rock bands were doing, like, battle hymn, you know, militant Christian. I was like, I know Striper, and, and that's about it. Yeah, I mean, Petra's that way. And so um, this is actually the ninth most popular song from 1986. It's called Destined to Win. <laughs> Encouraging us that we are destined to win because we are set apart by God. We're surrounded by His love. We're guarded by His power. Following the Lord until the battle's over. It just is the whole feel of of that song. It's a great song. One thing I want to mention, Eddie, he's got a new book which just came out. I'm going to give him a free plug if that's all right. It's called Rebel for God, Faith, Business, and Rock and Roll. You can get it on Amazon. And that is a title. Isn't it? That's a cool title. Yeah. And these are just stories from his experience within uh, the music business as a band, you know, in a Might band, a songwriter. Give, give that a read. He's, he's a great guy. Great guy. So check out his book, if you will. All right, so moving on to Culture Shock. All right, so this week's Culture Shock is we're going to talk about the 2018 World Cup. Yeah, Culture Shock, we like to talk about what's happening currently 
As I think we mentioned last week, we lived in South America and Argentina for seven years. As Vive Argentina! And so when you are in Argentina, soccer is like a religion. In oh, fact, uh, yeah. there's like the Church of Maradona is an officially recognized church in Argentina, even though it's not a church. Maradona, Diego Maradona, who is like their best player <laughs> ever. Messi is their best player right now. But the World Cup... Uh, happens every four years uh, here in the U.S. I mean, the United States is not even playing in this year's World Cup. I was like, did they even make it? The team didn't make it. Isn't but this year in Russia? It's in Russia. Russia. Exactly. World Cup moves around every four years. Four years ago, it was in Brazil. Of course, Brazil is a huge soccer country oh, yeah. as well. It was announced, I think, in 2026. Is that right? U.S.? Is that the it's U.S. It's actually one? North America. So the World Cup's going to take place with matches oh, in it's Canada, Canada, U.S., US and Mexico. Mexico. Because they have all kinds of teams. they got stadiums all over in different cities. There's something that's really different. That's why we're including this in Culture Shock. Something that happens during the World Cup every four years is the evangelical community will do an outreach. They'll try to reach people coming in from all over the world just to share Jesus. It's different this time. Really? It's different because Russia has basically clamped down on sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. The uh, Russian Orthodox Church is heavily influential in their politics and basically doesn't want anything from evangelical to get into it. I, I know just from the radio side of things, hundreds of radio licenses that were Christian radio stations have not been renewed and shut down. This law that they passed a couple years ago basically is anti-evangelism regulations. It's a law that says you cannot share your faith outside of government-sanctioned church buildings. So they have churches. They have evangelical but churches there. But they can't there. just, like, go out and preach the gospel. Right. And they they have, okay, first, they have sanction, okay. sanctioned churches, okay? Mm -hmm. They also have a lot of places that are not sanctioned. They're like underground churches because right. they're not giving out church licenses pretty yeah, yeah. much anymore. But you cannot evangelize outside of that building. So typically during World Cup, they're out there, they're sharing the gospel, they're passing out tracts, whatever, showing films and plazas and whatnot. They can't do that. So what they've done is churches, there's about 400 evangelical congregations just in the, the larger cities that are hosting these soccer matches, Moscow, St. Petersburg, and others, that can share the gospel inside their buildings. So what they're doing is they are literally opening up their church buildings the entire month of the international tournament. World Cup party? To share the World Cup. They've got screens in their their. their bringing people in to watch the World Cup. Once they're in the building, guess what? They can share. They can share the gospel. And so what they're doing is they're handing out like Russian New Testaments and they have some specialized discipleship material raced, uh, you know, created around the concept of soccer that they're sharing. And so, you know, to them, this is a fresh approach to ministry. We've mm -hmm. actually used this a lot here in the United States. Like, don't we use it for the Super Bowl? Exactly. The Super Bowl happens all the time and every year. And so churches will hold Super Bowl parties. They'll put it up on the screen. There's like video resources during halftime. You can turn off the horrible halftime show <laughs> and have like a, a football player sharing their testimony as a way of outreach. And so that's a new concept to churches in Russia. Now, a lot of the churches are like, I don't know about this, but it's actually the young people there that have connected to this opportunity. Really? And they're the ones that say, we need to do this. We can't do it any other way, and they've got to get into our buildings. We need to do this. And so um, that's what they are doing. What we can do from here, since we're not in the World Cup as the United States, but we can still watch it, man, we can be praying for those 400-some churches mm -hmm. as they're opening up their doors and uh, that people will come in, watch the games, celebrate those games. Because, you know, stadiums are sold out, especially Russian the Russian games mm -hmm. are completely sold out. They want to see the home team. Yeah. And so there are going to be a lot of people wanting to see those games. Come on in. We've got the game playing. It's a great opportunity for those churches and those fellow believers over there to share the gospel. That's really uh, cool. Yeah, I think so, too. That happens during the Olympics. It happens during the World Cup. It's just a cool thing to do. So culture shock. Well, that's going to wrap up uh, this edition of The Kitchen Table. Episode in the books. Uh, again, thank you for listening. Again, we'd love your feedback. You can follow me on Twitter, Brian Utter. Also, Jake on Instagram. Judder99. Judder99. You can communicate to us that way as well. We are starting a Facebook group on the Shine.fm Facebook pages called The Kitchen Table. And so it's a group within the page. We're inviting parents and their children, teenage, teenage children, young adult children, college-age children, 
to uh, join it. We're going to discuss more questions of faith that you might have. Again, if you have a question, let us know. We'd love to discuss that more. We hope this has been a benefit to you. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Bye. Have a great week. We'll be back next week. Thanks for listening to The Kitchen Table on the Shine.fm podcast network from Olivet Nazarene University. Be sure to subscribe for more content delivered each week on faith, music, and culture.